as we already discussed that using data key pairs we can encrypt and decrypt the data and there was one other thing that we missed out so which was signing and verification outside of aws kms so now if i ask you when i give you a document when i ask you to sign what is the purpose of that any ideas so a signature that you put on a document ensures that i have a proof that it's you who has signed it and if i have to validate it i'll try and match the signature that i have of yours with the signature on the document same way a digital signature is a mathematical scheme for verifying the authenticity of the digital message or document let's see the example here so if i want to sign a message we have to create the message digest so this one which is basically a hash function so we have the message digest here and we take the plain text private key and the signing algorithm that we have to get the signature of the document which is basically your required output so now once you have the signature you need to validate that so your signing is done so signing means you have created the signature for your data that you want and then now once you have the signature you have to validate it as well because that is what we want isn't it you put the signature you have to verify it or you have to validate it so here you have to reverse engineer and in this phase where we did the signing we created a message digest and then we formed a signature out of it using the plain text private key then verification will take the public key to decrypt the signature to match the message digest that is the hash value so for both the places for the verifications to be true the hash values for the message digest that is a message digest have to be same so that is when it will tell you that yeah it is true if the hash values are different it will reject it and it will tell you that it is a false case and when we talk about alias rather than using the long multi-digit number with hyphens you can actually provide a name of your choice and have it as your alias for your cmk so that's a very good thing for us because who wants to remember all these things you can put it a name there and you can use it let's move on so just to clear the things once again when we have to sign using the data key pair you have the data you create the message digest using the hash function and we use the private key or the plain text private key to create the signature and when we have to verify that we take the signature using the public key to decrypt the signature to match the message digest that is the hash value so both the places the hash values have to match so if they do match then it is true else it will be false one more very important concept that cmk helps us is to create envelope encryption so we saw how we can encrypt the data but what about the keys they should also be protected isn't it so for that what we can do is we can encrypt the plain text data key with the data key as we know that's fine we can encrypt that and then what we can do is we can encrypt the data key under another key and that is what is called as envelope encryption so you take the data key and encrypt it under another key so that is what is called as envelope encryption so envelope encryption is the practice of encrypting plain text data key with a data key and then encrypting the data key itself under another key but what if you encrypt the data key and then how are we going to decrypt the data so for that we need to have a top level plain text key that will act as our master key i know it's a bit confusing but remember one thing here so you create cmk using kms that is clear isn't it so you create cmk using kms so if you have to encrypt the data you need to create data key using cmk which you have created just now so that is also clear next you need to remember that when you create the data key you will get an encrypted data key and a plain text data key and the master key that i explained above which is our top level plain text key that will act as our master key and can be stored in kms and that is called the customer master key so you need to think in a way that you are storing the plain text key encryption in the form of the master key inside kms so that you can encrypt and decrypt your data encryption keys so this is something or this is one of the best features that i feel about kms so it gives you the flexibility to take a key that you have make it a master and then use that key as your master key or customer master key 
to encrypt or to create the data keys for sure and then to encrypt your data and that is one of the best thing that i feel so as we can see here we take the master key that we have we encrypt the data key we create the data encryption key so that is the encrypted data key and similarly what we have doing it here is like when we have this cmk or the customer master key we actually use it to encrypt the data key and make a data encryption key out of it so that is called envelope encryption so you can do that as well so now let's move on to the concept that is being heavily discussed as well that is key rotation and we need to understand first what is key rotation so i hope all have seen the current india versus england series where the england team actually has a player rotation policy which apparently hasn't been working off late but that's good for us isn't it in that what they do is they rest a few players for a match and then use new players in the other matches so that in a way they rotate the players to keep them fresh that's the whole idea uh, how long it works i don't know but yeah it may be good in the future but that's debatable so now imagine the same for your custom master keys like your players as per the cryptography standards and practices it is discouraged to extensively reuse the encryption keys so what we can do with that so we need to rotate the use of cmk as well for our encryption because if you keep using the same keys again and again you risk exposing the keys to the attackers so if someone is trying to find out the cmk fingerprint and trying that for a long amount of time or for a large amount of time it will take a bit of time but there could be a human error that could expose the data and will make it vulnerable but i am not sure that would happen but yes it's quite vulnerable that way so it is always recommended to rotate your keys think of it as using the same password for a long period of time when you consider security best practices they would recommend you to change it every one or two months isn't it so in the same way so it is highly recommended to rotate your cmks so here also there are two ways to do this either you can create a new cmk and change the alias of the cmk for all the applications using it or enable automatic rotation of the keys but the interesting thing that we see here is that every cmk has its cryptographic material so you can think of that as a metadata of the key don't try to over analyze this so a particular cmk will have its own material that actually comprises or makes the cmk so when you enable automatic rotation you can actually change the cryptographic material of the key rather than creating a new cmk so you can change the masala inside the cmk but that whole cmk will remain the same logically so in that way you can change the composition of the key i said masala but that's composition i'm sorry for that but not the key itself and the benefit of it is that it preserves the previous material forever so that you can make use of it to decrypt data using which it was encrypted and the material only gets deleted when you delete the cmk so you're sorted that way isn't it so if you see here so now if you see the visual here the backing key is the cryptographic material so the composition or masala that i told you the backing key that is the thing that gets changed and also the thing that gets used for encryption so if you have this key here so this key that you have here we have the cmk id and the backing key and when we enable rotation or the key rotation the backing key here actually changes but the previous backing key gets protected so that we can make use of it to decrypt data using which it was encrypted okay so based on which backing data it was used for encryption we can use the saved backing keys to actually decrypt the data again so we are not going to lose any data that we have here and the backing key only gets deleted when you delete the cmk and the cmk id actually remains intact and that's the only logical difference that it brings nothing more and you can enable rotation of keys using the aws uh, console aws cli api and when you enable automatic key rotation aws kms rotates the cmk 365 days after the enable date and every 365 days thereafter and if you see the way we can enable and disable key rotation using the aws kms api so to enable we can use aws kms enable key rotation operation here and pass the key id and if we have to disable it we can use aws kms disable key rotation and if we want to get the status of the key rotation we can just use the operation that is aws kms get key rotation status so it will give us a key rotation enabled status whether it is true or false and remember that it will take the parameter as hyphen hyphen key hyphen id where you have to pass the key id 
or you can use the alias as well that i'm sure if we can check the api status as well but why should we do this key rotation there must be some benefit isn't it as what i already told you but other than that there will be key differences or key benefits to this so the first one is that the properties of the cmk including its key id key arn region policies and permissions do not change when the key is rotated so we are very much secure about using the cmk again and again but we have rotated it so it's much more secure now and you do not need to change applications or alias that refer to the same cmk id or arn because the id does not change and the ARN also does not change. So your applications are not at all affected. After you enable key rotation, the AWS KMS actually rotates the CMK automatically every year. You don't need to remember or schedule the update because everything here is automated. But on the other hand, there is one more demerit here. So you need to pay the extra money to keep your key rotation going on. So you need to pay for that. So that's something that you have to do because uh, you can't expect everything to be done for free, isn't it? So you have to pay AWS for some things. <laughs> we have been paying a lot, I guess. Yeah. Now that we have discussed automatic key rotation, let's talk about how does manual rotation work? I told you about the two ways we can do this. So this is the second way. So here you have to create a new CMK and use it in the place of the current CMK instead of enabling automatic key rotation. So when you are trying to make use of manual key rotation, you are actually creating a new CMK. And you know what? I prefer manual key rotation as well because it gives me the flexibility over the rotation and the scheduling and the cost as well. And if you are using asymmetric CMKs or CMKs in custom key stores or CMKs with imported key material, you can control the rotation if done manually. Otherwise, you will not be able to do that. So here we have the application which has a provision to rotate the key manually. So the application creates a new CMK with the new CMK ID that we have here. And the backing key also is new. So you might ask me what happens to the already existing encrypted data. So for this, AWS recommends that you keep the old CMK enabled so that you can decrypt your data as AWS KMS detects which CMK was used to encrypt the data and it uses the same one to decrypt. It is just so smart, isn't it? So in order to make use of the new CMK, you can use the update alias operation to update the CMK of the existing alias so that so that you can make use of the new CMK ARN and ID and you will have the alias that you can point it to so that your applications won't be affected even if you have created a new CMK. So that's one more benefit, isn't it? Because when you create a new CMK, alias ARN and target key ID change as well. So, but that does not affect because we have the alias so that we can actually change, update the alias to this one and we can actually enable that or disable it depending on our usage and we can keep using the new CMK. So we have discussed what is a CMK, how it works, how do symmetric and asymmetric key works, how does the rotation work. Now let's talk about how encryption works for S3 and how KMS is being used there.